Welcome back to the McCowan Podcast. Billy Jaffe's in Boston. Mike Seisberg is in Southern Ontario. Paul Jones in the big smoke, too. I'm John Shannon. Uh, we have uh, dissected two teams, actually, Ottawa and Edmonton, two Canadian teams, which is fascinating because I, 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 both of them were supposed to be much better than they are, and that tells you the expectation in our country. Uh, but the other story to me is where rookies are. Um, and we've seen Connor Bedard and, and Billy, you've seen Bedard in person. Now you've seen, uh, Leo Carlson in person. Now, um, uh, you've probably seen Adam Fantilli on television. Uh, he looks pretty damn good in Columbus. Uh, these three rookies have made an impact and they aren't the only ones making an impact in the NHL this year. The guy in Boston whispers, Matt Patra. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but he was drafted last year, not this past year. Well, it doesn't matter. And he can still win the rookie of the year. I know. What a what a fun story it's been to be around so far, completely unexpected by the Bruins. But he has um, forced his way with his consistency outside of one game, his first game in California, in San Jose, uh, where he didn't perform well. He has had six other games where he has performed beautifully. Uh, and he's been a reason, a major reason, in addition to the goaltending, that the Bruins have been able to get off to a 6-0-1 start. By the way, a start that has been probably benefited, not probably, has been benefited by the schedule that they've had. Yes. Um, no question about it, but you still got to win those games. We yep. know that. Mm -hmm. um, but the Bruins, you know, were in questionable straits as to who would be another center for them after Zaka and Coyle, and they have this kid, Matt Patra. Uh, he's been great. Now, just with regard to Bedard, I have seen him a couple of times. I shiver to think how the Blackhawks would generate any offense without the kid for the most part. I know that there have been a couple of games where he hasn't been able to do much, but they don't really have much around him at all. It doesn't take a, a hockey analyst to observe that. Anybody really can. And they have young defense. He, you know, your offense starts from your defense. Let's not forget, if Connor, Connor Bedard, maybe in juniors, could slalom through an entire team. But here at the NHL level, you need your defense to great breakout, start the great breakouts, and then get it on his stick. And he's got three He's got three freshmen. I call them freshmen because they all could be, well, one of them would graduate now. But they're all they're all rookies. Mm -hmm. That's heavy duty stuff on the back end there. Mm -hmm. So I cut mm -hmm. him some slack, but he's been phenomenal. He has been to me, you know, look, I, it's going to be a tough year for Connor and the Hawks, but he has been great. Fantilli looks like a man yeah. already out there at times. And, and, and you bring up Leo Carlson and I saw him last night live. Um, I saw highlights of him for another game. What I really like about his game fellas is Okay, not only is he big, but he looks big. He's not afraid to play big, meaning he'll handle net front and behind the net. And he looks like he has, like Matt Potra does, anticipation that you can't teach. He understands to slide here instead of there. Like we were just watching him last night, really working around the net front. He's very good, very, mm -hmm. very good at it. So, um, you know, I'm curious how they end up playing out the whole uh, we're going to watch him thing, uh, load management thing with, with him. They but do you, hey, by the way, do you, do you like the idea? I I can understand it. What I, in the sense of, you want to be cautious about things, and I know a lot of people have brought up Stephen Stamkos from what was it fourteen years ago now, thirteen years ago? I don't remember how many years, but they did it yeah. with him, and it worked out well. I'm fine with that. But what I don't get, and this is just a me thing, and I've said it numerous times already on on the air or whatever, is how you're not playing him at home if you're really concerned about that play him at yeah. home for the you know have him sit on the road more than on the road because if i'm a duck fan and they have been suffering duck fans yeah for the last couple of years going through this remodel now it was a rebuild now we know that um holy smokes i want to see the, the stud that we like i still don't get how they didn't play him at home last weekend after they played him at mullet arena on a Saturday afternoon against Arizona. And yet then they didn't play him at home against the Bruins. I mean, but that's, I'm not trying to nitpick here, but to me, if I'm an Anaheim fan, that's all I want. I understand. Listen, we've been told that coaching management, obviously agent, I'm assuming ownership are all on board with this, but if I'm still the owner, which gosh, I wish I was, I, I you know, <laughs> I got a lot of stuff, but I would say play him at home. Play him at home. The if you're going to sit him eight times, play him at home 
you know, most of those times, you know, don't, don't play him on the road and not treat our fans to what is this great young player. That's an awesome point, yeah, Billy. I, and, you know, I mean, uh, I, I couldn't figure that out either. What, they didn't want to disappoint the throng of 5,000 that were at Mullet Arena that night? I mean, um, you know. It wasn't even what, a night, Zeiss. It was, in, it was a matinee. And, and the reason I'm saying that, to be flippant, yes, like, put up on a bigger stage. You have the Boston yeah, Bruins exactly. coming in on a Sunday night, where, by the way, Anaheim usually draws pretty well on a Sunday yeah. at 5.30. Play them there. But, mm -hmm. uh, again. He looked damn good last night on Boston in the road. And and what those of us that haven't seen him as much as we saw Bedard play or Fantilli play because he didn't play on our continent for the most part. What does he do well? Smarts. So he 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 works in and out well. He's a big boy, isn't he? He is a big boy. He works in and out of tight areas. Um, he's got ha hockey sense. Um, it's cliche, but the puck finds him. And what does that mean in any sport? When, when the when the ball, the this, when it finds you, it means you're moving, you're not watching, you're participating. Um, and again, because of his size, he can handle, you know, he can handle the the load, so to speak. I, I got to think, I don't know what the actual, I'd love to be privy to the plan. And they say they already have it all just to, just to understand it. Right. And I mean, I would say play him, play him, play him, and then sit him a couple, but he had this small minor, lower body injury shanty so maybe they're extra concerned about yeah. that but man he's, he looked good last night uh, billy billy let me jump in here and i know in my sport the term load management doesn't necessarily mean rest it means try to have a consistent lo workload all the way through so maybe that was his turn or time to play in arizona and the way his management schedule of the work goes, that was the time off. But I'm with you. Look, especially if the fans have been suffering, let the let trot them out in front of the people that are paying the tickets, Absolutely. paying your your homework. I mean, that's I mean, and that's something. If the team gets better and as they grow, where where do you run this guy out? Because mm -hmm. there's also there's also money to be considered in terms of TV and, and all of those other things around around the dollars and the business side. Before we uh, before we move on from rookies, I, I, I don't want to get a call from Billy Armstrong because Logan Cooley's pretty damn good. Mm, yeah. And, and, I mean, and, 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 you know, there is a difference between guys that played two years of college and yes. came right from junior. He's yes. a little older, a little more mature. Not much though. He's not, but but but, but enough. A, a little goes a long way hey. as far as maturity goes. Just that my wife tells me that all the time. Please. And listen, for the millions <laughs> and millions of people that are watching this podcast right now, okay. If you don't know much about Logan Cooley, go to YouTube and watch the goal that he scored in Australia because uh, there is still an athletic supporter from the Los Angeles Kings defense men, not defense man. Um, in what I've got to say is one of the most spectacular goals that I've seen in a long time. Yeah. How, I don't know if either of you have seen Arizona, how good are they? Can they make the playoffs, Mike? I don't know if they can, but I think they've taken that next step. Uh, they, they've in terms of, I think they surprised a lot of people, Billy last year. Um, you know, because everybody thought they were going to be 32nd or, or whatever. You know, they were more, I give them credit, and I give the coaching staff credit. They were more competitive than a lot of people thought. And then they went out and, and brought in some veterans, the Alex Kerfoots. We can go over some of the other, the Jason Zuckers, you know, to kind of sprinkle in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not picking them for the playoffs right now, Shani, but to our point earlier in the, in the, in the podcast, um, when you look at the West, I mean, you know, after you get through those first four or five teams, you just don't know. I mean, are they better than Anaheim right now? Uh, to me, they're certainly, uh, a step, you know, steps ahead of San Jose. Who um, is it? Oh, not... who is, yeah. San Jose. Geez. Yeah. San Jose. By the way, I think there's 31 teams in this league and then there's San Jose. Oh, I, I know. And I, oh, I know yeah. the coaches there well, and I feel bad for them because this yeah. is not their doing. But this is a team. They could end up losing more. It, they, they. This is a. It, <laughs> I'm stumbling it's here. I'm trying to watch my words. This, this is a. This is a. This could be a scary proposition. 
yeah in san jose and i hope not because i really i really enjoy the coaches there they're good people yeah. Well, David Quinn's a good man. I, 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 so uh, let's but say. By the way, no Arizona, no playoffs. Not yet. Not okay. their defense and goaltending. Not yet. But you know what? They got believability. They've got trust in their coach. They've got exciting young players. It's yeah. still it, and and it's 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 a definitely better situation there. Mm -hmm. 